Hi, I'm Clark on Temptress. We're redoing the head in our boat in part of our total remodel. We have the actual facilities pulled out. And I thought this would be a great day to talk about how these things fail, why they plug up, and how you can set yours up so it will never happen again. Well, it's a rainy day. Uh, it's not always sunny in paradise. And if you get a video out every week, sometimes you have to film in the rain. So sorry about that. Let's talk about heads. There's a saying, everybody wants to be captain until there's captain work to do. And on a small boat, fixing plugged sewage plumbing is always captain work. Uh, this is a common problem. And we're gonna talk about in today's video how it happens, why it happens, how to avoid it, and how to fix it when it happens without tearing the system apart and having uh, everywhere. The problem with marine heads is they get a buildup of this very hard substance. You'll see it in the bowl. It'll, it'll grow on the bowl below the water line sometimes. And if you try to take a screwdriver to it, you'll find out it's really hard. It's actually harder than the enamel um, of the porcelain. So don't try to physically remove it. You're going to fail and just destroy your head. So let's learn what it is. If you remember back in high school, maybe geology or chemistry, they talked about uh, calcium carbonate, limestone, how to test for it with acid, all of that might be a flashback. Well, this is calcium carbonate. You're actually making limestone. What happens is human urine mixing with salt water takes the calcium chloride out of the salt water and plates it on as a carbonate. It's a very complex reaction, but it does happen. So that's the problem, calcium carbonate. Now let's talk about the solution. If you want that to go away, you can treat it with an acid, and the acid will very effectively make it go away, much like the limestone test with a little bit of vinegar does. You can use vinegar, it will work. If you want to use something that works faster, uh, muriatic acid, which is the common name for hydrochloric acid, is uh, readily available all over the world and does a great job. I tend to use vinegar when I can find it, and it's not terribly expensive. Some places in the world, that's just pricey as hell, uh, on a monthly basis, and we'll go into how the treatment works. Or I let it build up a bit, and then I use the muriatic acid and just clean it right out. So the solution is to use some kind of an acid to keep this reaction at bay, keep the, the scale broken back down. Let's look into how we do that in the chemistry. Chemistry that's involved in, the, in let's just use muriatic acid because it's a very simple chemical. It's HCl. Uh, it goes in an aqueous solution, but we won't get into that for purposes of us, it's HCl. When you have calcium carbonate in water and you want it to go away, if you lower the pH with HCl, you get this equation. It's pretty simple, really. The calcium carbonate breaks up and at the end of the reaction, you get water. No big problem. Carbon dioxide, no big problem for the environment <laughs> in this quantity. And you get uh, calcium chloride. Well, calcium chloride is the second most common salt that's already in the ocean. And what's here came from the ocean. So you're really not hurting anything at all. So if you're concerned with pouring this acid and what it's doing to the environment, it's totally benign as long as you don't overtreat. So how to avoid this problem from happening in the first place? If you remember, I said it's a combination of urine and salt water. Well, you're always going to have salt water in the system, but you have control whether there's urine in the system. Just flush more. A good thing to do is to take one little piece of toilet paper and put it in the head, have your partner go outside and watch the through hole. Pump and count until they say they see it come out. That's how many pumps it takes to push one flow of water through all your piping. If you can make your piping always have pure salt water in it, you won't have calcium carbonate buildup. If that's not an option, and that could be because you have a small holding tank and you just don't want to fill it up, or maybe you have a partner that doesn't flush enough, um, you can solve this by actual chemistry later. But it's always better to stop the problem from happening. Do that. What's the symptoms of this problem? Uh, hopefully you haven't let it go this far. Hopefully you've been doing what I'm gonna tell you to do and 
clear it out before it's a problem. But what happens is this. Here's a piece of somebody's sewage hose and look in there. It is not the diameter it used to be. This has grown from the outside over months and it's become a much smaller hose. Eventually that hose gets so small that it just clogs up easily. Also, the valves can't do their job if they're in jail. They're in the jail of all of this calcium carbonate. This is called the duckbell valve. It has to be able to open and close and it, this will get plugged up with toilet paper or other things. But how long does this take to happen? Well, how long is a piece of string? It can happen really fast. When I first moved aboard the boat, um, I was in Seattle. I was in an area where I had a very small holding tank, but I had to pump out. I couldn't even make it to the next pump out cycle, so I was really not flushing my system. And I would get this buildup this bad in six months. And at the time, all I knew to do was to take it out and beat it against the dock and break it up physically and get it out, which was just laborious and honestly gross. And half the time it only happened when the tank was full and I couldn't do anything, so you can imagine. Well, I got thinking about what it was chemically and I realized it was an acid and I tried acid on it and that worked great. Turns out lots of people know about this, but it was new to me at the time. Um, I'm sure it's new to some of you, so that's why I wanted to do this video, so you can know this. This is months and months, I have really no idea, probably over a year of not being cleaned with acid. So um, that can happen. That calcium carbonate has to be removed. Now, you can do that by simply pouring an acid right into the head, just pumping a couple strokes until the acid goes up into the hose and let it sit there. And you'll know it's working, you'll hear it. It's bubbling like mad. Keep doing that. Flush with a lot of water, get every, all the little chunks out. Do it again, keep doing it until you stop hearing the noise and then you know the process is done. I'm gonna take this particular piece to the beach where it's a little safer to do this kind of thing and I'm gonna process it on the beach so we can actually watch what's happening inside the pipe. Should be fun. We're gonna clean this part up now. Um, first, a little talk on safety. If you're using muriatic or a strong acid, you need to know some things. Uh, first off, you pour acid into water. Never pour water into acid. Um, just, just remember it that way. Don't worry about why, but don't do it. Um, you wanna have gloves, eye protection, and if you're working in your boat or something, it's good to have some baking soda around. That's a strong enough base to, to neutralize this out. So if you got some on you, you could treat yourself with that. Having it already dissolved in water is excellent. I don't have that set up here because I have the entire ocean. And if something goes horribly wrong, I will dive into the ocean and uh, clear myself off that way. But be safe, this stuff will burn. It's not gonna like eat right through you in a second. It, it'll just burn. Uh, so. Anyway, let's hit this and watch what happens. I'll get back to this in a minute. Oh, by the way, these, uh, these wash tubs are wonderful. We talk about them in our laundry videos. <coughs> if you get some, you'll use them forever in all kinds of things. There's stuff that looks just like these, but not by the same company. And I bought them accidentally. They failed within months in the sun, where I've owned some of these for, I don't know, eight years. Um, you might want to look in the Amazon store down below if you don't have something like this. They are just handy as hell. So let's give this a go. Well, it happens when you do video. We're just about to zoom in and pour the acid on the pipe and we had a technical difficulty. So I'm going to show you what's going on in here. Here's a piece of the stuff. It's partially reacted, so it won't be as flamboyant. And since I'm inside, I'm going to do it with vinegar this time. But I'm going to react to this so we can see what happens inside the pipe. Again, I've got my baking soda here for safety and, uh, well, baking soda. Here we go. Little bubbles forming. It's reacting with the acid. Um, you can see it happening in there. Like I said, this part's piece was already partially reacted, so it's not flamboyant exactly. So after a while in this acid bath, 
it gets at least fragile. Oh yeah, just falls right apart where this stuff was hard as hell before. Um, and normal flushing, maybe beating on the hose a little bit with a hammer will break it up and flush it overboard. So how to do this on a practical basis. Pour your acid in the toilet bowl. Let it sit there for a while. If you've got any plating out happening in the toilet bowl, it'll come really clean. Give it a little wash with your toilet brush. And then just pump it with the, the valve set to dry. Just pump the concentrated acid into the pipes and listen. And you'll hear it's doing its thing. When it stops doing its thing, add some more acid and do it again until you don't hear it anymore. Um, it might behoove you to give the pipes a little wrap and then turning it to saltwater flush, flush the heck out of it, trying to get any chunks out. And uh, if you do that like monthly, um, you really won't have any troubles. I'm gonna do another video on tricks in the head. Uh, when we refinish our refit, we will have a nice pretty room and everything will be newly installed. And I've got a lot of just plain hacks, I guess. I do some things that I've never seen done in other boats and I'm gonna share them with you. If you've got some ideas about how to make that cabin a better place, please leave a comment down below. Um, if you've got something I haven't come up with, I would like the permission to put it in the video. Uh, also, if you want to see that video, the best way to do that is subscribe and push the bell, you know, so all this stuff comes to you. It also helps our channel immensely if you could bring up the subscriber numbers. So if you haven't done that yet, please. And, you know, the thumbs up, nothing easier than pushing that button. Thanks. Bye from Temptress.